promised to replace Mecha. What is this? This is what Mecha did. Maybe you need to reevaluate your relationship with your family. This cop is on my ass. He'll do anything to frame me. Detective Whitney, she sent me here to lie to you. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, tonight we'll be talking about Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3, Episode 4. This is my quick thoughts, early impressions. So down below, I want you guys to give me your quick thoughts, early impressions on this episode. And it's heating up, y'all. It's getting real crazy, man. And you can tell that Episode 5 it's about to be a banger. I cannot wait to see what's going to go down. It ain't looking too good for your boy Lorenzo. Monet finds out about Lorenzo being at the crime scene of Zeke. And now she understands that he may have taken out Zeke his damn self. And he lied to her this entire time. But we know his days are numbered. Whether Monet gets him or somebody else, Lorenzo was not making it. And from the looks of it, and y'all know how episode 5 is... He may be gone in next week's episode. We shall see. Now, I told you guys about Kane and Lorenzo as far as Kane starting to feel, you know, kind of sad for his pops. Well, in this episode, we saw exactly why he's going to feel sad because Lorenzo saved his life. And they kind of, you know, squashed whatever issues that they had. Kane tells him, look, I'm sorry for treating you like that. And y'all know Lorenzo, he's all about family and keeping family together no matter what. So, we already know once Lorenzo is up out of here... Kane's going to feel very bad and he is really going to have to step up to the plate as far as, you know, being the leader for this family alongside Drew. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on Detective Kevin Whitman. Damn, I told you guys, hell, I didn't even have to tell y'all nothing because y'all know what time it is when people like him are entirely too thirsty. When people like him, they take their job serious for real, for real. And that's what he was doing. He was willing to do whatever it took to take down Monet and his biggest mistake was putting in some trust with your girl, Dirty Diana. And she showed him, you know, some master moves up in this episode. And I'm thinking like, man, this dude, he's crazy as hell. You would think he would be smart enough not to slip up like this, but apparently he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? He was not smart enough. And I knew Monet was not going to think twice about taking him out. I mean, he was getting close. And she was not about to risk this dude living and, you know, him proving that Monet took out Carrie Miracle. I mean, this dude was not playing around at all. So Monet, she had to eliminate the threat, but it puts more heat on her and her entire family, which we know Diana, she was pissed off because Monet made it seem like they were just going to set him up and he was going to, you know, get in trouble, get locked up for doing what he did. But no, she took him out. And Monet pretty much told Diana, look, I did what I had to do. Of course, we know she just used Diana to get exactly what she wanted. And now Diana is still going to have those feelings about her moms. And it doesn't seem like the relationship is fixed. Seems like things probably has gotten worse in my opinion. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on Drew Gordo. We already knew those two. You know what I'm saying? It was going to be, you know, making out, kicking it. As I told you guys, this dude, Drew, his weakness is his love life. He has to focus on what he needs to be doing. But I will say this. Luckily, Lorenzo, you know, made sure Drew and Gordo was at that whole deal with those guns because they end up saving the day. But we know it's still somebody breathing, y'all. It's still one of the proud boys out there breathing. And he is, of course, working with Blanca Rodriguez. And a lot of you guys was mentioning that Angela's nephew, Junior, he's going to be in this episode. Of course, we saw him in those exclusive pictures and we saw him in this episode I guess his name is Agent Young or whatever. We haven't seen this guy since Power Season 6 in that pause episode or whatever. But it seems like he wants to, you know, put in some work to help stop the bad guys. That boy want to get payback. He wants to get revenge for what happened to Angie, right? So we're going to see how the story is going to go and how deep they want to, you know, develop his character throughout this series. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on your boy Kane and Effie. Now, we know Kane was pretty much telling Effie, he was putting out threats or little small hints or whatever, that he may just tell Tariq about what really happened to Lauren. He understood that Brayden did not get the job done because Brayden, he is too shaky. He, of course, always messes up when it's time to take out somebody. So he knew Brayden didn't do it. And it had to be Effie. Effie tells him, 
don't tell Tariq. I'm going to, you know, tell him when the time is right. But at the end of the episode, she tells him, look, I still need some more time or whatever. I can't tell him. Please don't let him know. You know what I'm saying? It, basically, she's telling Kane that Tariq is a guy that, you know, is looking out for her. And she has these feelings for him. And Kane, you can tell he is really feeling Effie. Now, we knew he liked Effie. I mean, we knew he wanted to clap those cheeks. But we we're starting to see more of a connection. Like, okay, I really like this chick for real. I want to look out for her. And I want to be there for her. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this storyline develops as the season continues to air out. And I want to know what's going to happen with Effie and Kane after Tariq and Effie fall out this season. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on the whole Cooper Sacks thing. We know he is starting to get a little bit more intel on Jenny Sullivan. We know that Blanca found out about Cooper Sacks being Jenny Sullivan CI. And of course, she was pissed. And Cooper Sacks was pissed that Jenny was working with uh, Blanca as well. But they got to do what they got to do in order to, you know, make this work. But we know Cooper Sacks, he is digging up some dirt on Jenny Sullivan. He's not believing everything she's talking about. People keep calling her. We saw that he took a picture of the number, which we know that's Lauren. And as I told you guys in my final predictions, Cooper Sacks eventually, he's going to figure out what Jenny is doing. And I cannot wait to see once he uncovers that dirt. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on the whole RSJ storyline. We know Tariq was able to get the deal for Westing Holdings. And Uncle Lucas, he was putting that pressure on Tariq after he was the one that messed things up. Now, you guys let me know what y'all think about RSJ. Because this dude knows a lot about James St. Patrick. He kept bringing him up when he was having that conversation with Tariq. So, I want to know all the details about this whole relationship. How much did he really know about James St. Patrick. Did he know he was, you know, ghost? That he was doing all types of illegal activity? I mean, it seems like he knows a lot. Hell, it seems like he knows more than the Tejada family knew about ghosts. And we never really got that connection with Lorenzo and ghosts. Remember, we were supposed to get, you know, some intel about that. Well, it was rumored. We know Courtney Kemp did state in her live stream that eventually we're going to see Lorenzo. He may or may not, you know, put out information about what he does and does not know about ghosts or whatever. So we haven't seen that yet at all. And from the looks of it, we're not going to see it. But y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I think this whole RSJ storyline is crazy. This dude is definitely up to some things, y'all. He's smart. He's smart, calculated. He does like Tariq, but he got some tricks up his sleeve. And I believe he's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? They said real criminals hide in plain sight. So we're going to see what RSJ is going to be on. We already know anything that this actor is in. He don't play around. You know what I'm saying? I, we talked about him before the season even aired. This dude flat out crazy. We saw what he was on in The Wire. Hell, we saw what he was on in Lottery Ticket. He don't play about those tickets. But we will continue to talk about Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3 soon. I will be dropping a full recap, more details about what we saw in this episode later on in the day. So thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.